please going for that out. You do get more consistency by not running the guidance in the first place and making sure that you just hit the good cards. Well, speaking of the good cards, Blitzchung does have a way to find them, arguably with Guess the Way. But it's a card again. Well, sorry. Speaking of the good cards, there they are for Possessi. <laughs> uh, but on Blitzchung's side, Guess the Way is a card I've had a bit of a complicated relationship with. I, I think I overly advocate for keeping it. And he does go for it here just to uh, get himself some card draw at the start of the game. Uh, but to be fair, it does eat up some potential to go in a little bit earlier. Yes, um, I think in this situation, it's fine to keep the guess the weight. The only situation I really toss it a lot is if you are in an even faster matchup where you need exactly fungal or gibberling, right. or if you have uh, the fungal and the guess the weight on the coin, which means that you don't want to draw two and then draw three because the coin will make you overdraw by that point. So I think this situation is perfectly fine for Blitzchung. Although, Possessi's hand might make it such that Blitzchung's hand is a little bit too slow. He's going to have to look for Innervate or Lightning Bloom off of the Guess of the Weight, hopefully, because the Spring Water is already going to come down soon. Uh, look for a second there, like the Hearthstone client had developed an allergy to any more token druid uh, decks being played, or maybe just Encanter's Flow on too. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of them in Apex. Ooh, okay. Gibberling. Not this turn, but it certainly Ooh. gives Blitzchung a bit more flexibility. Uh, more likely to be less by this point because he has so many five drops in the hand. I think he's wondering if you guess wrong on purpose um, in order to be able to play Fungal next turn because it's very obviously less is the correct choice. Um, and Blitzchung knows that. It's just, I think, if you don't want the extra card. That's true. Interesting. And he does go for it. For no one. Which means he's trying to go fungal into coin glowfly. If you take the more likely second draw there, it does give you an out for lightning bloom to, or innervate to immediately gl play glowfly the next turn. But if it's sure. not either of those, well, it happened to be innervate, which is funny, then it's a bit worse for Blitzchung overall. Yeah, he's just going for juicing it up to the absolute max right now. I think he does still overdraw um, one card, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really matter all too much in this deck, even if you are overdrawing cards, to be honest. This is huge for Possessi. He has the Apexus Blast. Being able oh, to yeah. get on board before Token Druid is so premium in the Ooh. matchup. You get to take first few value trades. That's a big overdraw for Blitzchung. Not that he needs the card draw right now, but if Bl Possessi weathers the storm against the first couple Glowflies, Blitzchung would want to take every piece of refill he could. But we're looking at some really strong plays coming through for both players, that is, however. Possessi, Flame Strike ready next turn. Combustion available right now. It looks like he's going to get there. So how does Blitzchung prepare for that? I don't think his hand lets him do more than just refill the board. Possessi, meanwhile, has the mana to keep drawing. So it's going to be Combustion and, I guess, Primordial Studies to try and hit exactly Mini Mage so he can spend his mana. I don't think he wants to play the Solarian at this point if he hits a better spell damage minion off of the Primordial Studies, just so he doesn't potentially mess with the other Spring Water and Apexis left in his deck. Mm. Uh, for Blitzchung, if he gets Lightning Bloom, then we could be talking because he can uh, play a board and immediately buff it the, the next turn, but might be too late. Yeah, he does get the mini mage, which is, I think you correctly realized what he was looking for. Um, the question was just really if he wanted to go Solarian first, just because then if he didn't get exactly lab partner, he would be floating mana off of the second one. Um, uh, but I think that would have been uh, okay either way. Oh, no, wait, it costs zero mana, so he could have got a two cost as well. Ignore me. Okay, I think Possessi going for the high roll once again of hitting exactly mini mages where my head would be at for this situation. But Blitzchunk has the Gibberling to kind of recoup the lost Glowflies from the Combustion, and then he can still play one of the buff cards after this. Yeah, I think the important thing here is that you... Contrary to what you would usually do, you don't actually want to play Innovate here, even if it just gives you another gibbling with the Death Rattle on it, because you really want Innovate Eclipse, uh, Solo Eclipse plus Arbor up next turn. That is what Blitzchung is setting up for, to just win the game on the spot, because for Possessi, Flame Strike alone here may not be able to do it. Devolving Flame Strike, however, I think might just be good enough. Oh. Okay, two of the missiles hitting the same minion is very unlucky here. Possessi still has this Varden! I was gonna say mask or flame strike, but the Varden is so premium. 
I think he can set up counter lethal with the Bard. <laughs> he just has oh, that's fireball, right? Yeah. Um, one second. If he goes Varden with the Fallen Hero, sends 7 to face, then he is representing six, uh, 13 damage on board the next turn, and then a Fireball. Well, it doesn't play around Lunar Eclipse, but it seems pretty good to me. Because you kind of just stop Blitzjung from doing anything with this board. Sure, he can buff it, but it doesn't make any difference to Fireball. What are the punishes for that, though? Say they go Lunar Eclipse plus Soul of the Forest, or if they discover a removal spell uh, off of the nature studies and then go Soul of the Forest, if you can't then clear the turn after, were you uh, going too aggressive at that point? Perhaps. Perhaps. I might be tunnel visioning on the fact that Blitzjunk has the forbidden combo of Innervate Solar Eclipse Arbor up, but this is already quite a lot of minions cleared for Blitzjung. Well, he could get <clears throat> maximum mana expenditure on this turn with uh, the Lightning Bloom slotted in as well to go for Power of the Wild plus the double Arbor Up thanks to Solar Eclipse. Or he could hold back a little bit and try and say, right. make it so that Glowfly is still available. I like this better. And then he can still play Soul of the Forest because of Lightning Bloom. And he has the exact amount of cards in hand that after taking the trade, he still gets the maximum amount of board minions. It's really smart, I think, from Blitzjung, especially after having seen a Devolving Missiles. That's the most yeah. premium way Mage has to deal with uh, Soul of the Forest in particular, except for Varden, I suppose. And Varden's not exactly dealing with the board. Varden is giving Possessi potentially a way to race Blitzchung, but without having pushed that much damage, I don't think Possessi gets there with just the Varda next turn. Uh, am I crazy for just wanting Power of the Wild on this turn? Uh, I know that Lo Solar Eclipse plus Arbor Up isn't necessarily mandatory on the following turn, but you've just seen a Flame Strike. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. A different route oh. entirely. Okay. So, there were many different paths Blitzjung could have taken this turn, obviously. I think using the Lightning Bloom either way is not a big deal because he still has mana for Arbor up the very next turn. So I think what Blitzjung has done here has tried to set up a board where even if it's combustion and say partial clear on three minions, then the Arbor up would still give him lethal. But against Varden, you just cannot play around that. <laughs> you cannot, as Possessi gets a complete board lock, deck of lunacy played, and Gia, he is on a wing and a prayer right now. This needs to be the miracle card. Uh, that Ooh. is the miracle card, Derek. That's, That's the like miracle card. The <laughs> best card you can get. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no. Uh, whiff, whiff, and oh. light whiff. Yeah, that's, that's not good enough. Just not it. Oh. No more card draw as well. But Strong just gets there. He baited us. He teased us with that perfect top deck, but then into this absolute garbage. You go ring toss into cascading. That's two minions destroyed, and there's still 24 damage left on the board. So even if you hit ice barrier and counter spell, I guess that's the out, right? And then Blitzchung doesn't draw a spell to proc for okay, counter spell next sure. turn. No, good point. Good point. It's still very, very uh, bad, the situation for Possessi. Make no mistake. Uh, well, he definitely got offered Counterspell there, and you'd, you'd guess that he picked it as well. Oh, Blitzstrom doesn't have mana to test for Counterspell and play Armor. Oh. So I think he starts with a 2-2 to the face and then evaluates from there, because if it's not Barrier, he just wins anyway. Or this, yep, same thing. Yeah, he still sure. gets to play a card. Yep. Okay, this is the this is the outcome where Possessi survives. Just barely. <laughs> he gets one more draw. I don't know how he scrapped <laughs> that one together, but he's done it. Another okay. Skull, Derek. A I second chance. That. We need skull number two. Uh, oh. That kills a lot of minions, but these have death rattle on them. You can do it with Mask of Cthulhu, though, right? Yeah, and but that... I don't think that's likely to clear. There's going to be 10 health worth of minions. But it's the best he's got! 
it's so it's gonna be the got. miracle mask <laughs> yeah do you go prime first i don't even know if that's it's just the same as pinging right like one extra damage basically yeah well i guess the prime is on board then so might as well rather than the ping and this has to clear every single tree and it went throughout the whoops oh, oh no. that was so close oh. that was so close my goodness <laughs> I thought it had for a second, I truly believed, but there it is. Hero power alone, and Gia, that was honestly kind of close. There were still outs if he had cleared the board there. You know, his deck was basically right. gone, but uh, whew, okay. The uh, expected outcome does happen. Possessi gave us a very good show at the end, uh, but now the first game that I was saying is so important for Blitzchunk has gone his way. Eric, we were double baited first by the skull into giving him <laughs> a way to survive at three. Well, not even. Well, it had to give him the cascading horror, but it yeah. really was the um, ring toss that put in the work there. And then the bait of the Mask of Cthulhu, which, to be fair, with 11 procs, it's very unlikely that it deals 10 damage all to minions. And that means only like one hit is allowed to go to face by that point but it was so close at the very end it came down to the last mass proc and Blitzchung you know if he had been one off there I think Possessi could have definitely come back yeah for sure he would have had margins <laughs> only two turns thanks to the hero power unless he found some healing uh, but it wasn't out of the question right I guess there was still one Librum of Hope in the deck because there was still one Mask of Cthulhu yet to be found. Uh, and obviously there's a bunch of other stuff in there of Deck of Lunacy. It's uh, aptly named for sure. Uh, but that does mean that Blitzchunk, as I said, got that important first wing. Possessi now gets to switch Gia. And while uh, I, I will admit that the uh, ring tosses have been pretty good for him overall, you would still much, much rather switch over to this list with double... Uh, Sorry, double shooting star, double flame strike just gives you much more ability to clear the board both early and late game. And it's especially good if you can still hit the Encanter's flow in the mulligan. That's right. I think the thinking behind this for Possessi is you don't want to go for ring toss unless you're already in one of those desperation situations where, oh, you need Ice Barrier to survive or you counter spell and hope that the Druid is running low on gas. And it's also rather hard to corrupt in the matchup because you're generally not playing a Pexis Blast unless Druid has developed nothing and, or you have no better options. So I think it's perfectly fine to cut the ring toss and Possessi here coining the Encanter's Flow because he has Ruined Orb to play the next turn also make sense. Yeah, Blitzchung smirking there. I wonder if he thinks this means it's double Encanter's flow, because to be fair, three cards were kept and a flow was coined. That usually implies uh, there's two of them, but pff, imagine needing to play that garbage in your hand when you can just top deck AI on two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is way better than Ruined Orb. So, oh, but Blitzchung has also put together quite the banger of a hand doesn't mm -hmm. get that much value with the gibberling so it's actually difficult to parse how he makes room for the fungal fortunes but you probably just take like a subpar gibberling turn which is no longer subpar because he picked up the uh, adorable infestation so how do you actually do it do you try and fit in like solar on the turn as well and go solar uh, infestation or, or what because there was a lot of mana to manipulate there that was tough. I was thinking that he would go first gibberling into nature studies, and then if you hit a cheap card to go along with that, you would play right. it. And if not, probably end up on the solar adorable and then play the marshal, something like that. But Blitzchung is holding back altogether, which means he wants an even bigger gibberling turn, and that's fine. He gets to fit in the Pride's Fury with it, which is a very, very big deal. And it's interesting, right? We've seen two very different approaches to the matchup, specifically when Possessi, Possessi switches to his tertiary, because Chonsu went for the plan of, okay, he's going to clear all my boards anyway, so let's just play very inefficient gibbling turns just to get something on the board. Maybe I can aggro him down. And to be fair, it worked with a couple of very lucky top decks. Blitzchung here is going the full opposite. He is maximum greeding. Oh, and he gets all the options for how to pay off on that green oh, yeah. low fly. It definitely seems more efficient. But this imprisoned observer for Possessi, Loki has really good synergy with the mask. It can soften up a board because obviously Blitzchung is not just going to play a bunch of 2-2s two into the turn that wakes up. But it can help Possessi get combustion clears. And to bridge the gap before that point anyway, he just conveniently has 
a full clear if he wants to take it with double combustion brain freeze. Super, super clean. Even Rune Dorb. Oh, no, wait, that's one mana off. Um, and then he just gets to clear up anything Blitzchung plays next turn, which probably means it's going to be essentially a pass here from Blitzchung, right? Uh, he can go Gibberling and already Pride's Fury, but that doesn't feel worth it because you're just going to lose two damage across the board after anyway. So... Oh man, he also doesn't have the hand space to just draw with Fungal Fortunes. It's really awkward. So he could, of course... It's annoying with the way that Solar plus uh, Soul of the Forest works. You want it to be two layers. Give your Death Rattles Death Rattles, not uh, summon 14 minions at once. But uh, you could try and set up for just a Soul of the Forest turn here and pray that they don't have Flame Strike. Hmm, that could be, but then that would involve using the Lightning Bloom, right? Mm. And then he just doesn't have a board filler next turn because the Gibberling is really his only board presence True. here. The rest are payoff cards. So, oh man, I honestly couldn't tell you. Maybe he does just have to go for that so he has hand space to draw with Fungal Fortunes, but... Blitzchung is just going to end up on the full pass. Also worth noting that Possessi had the option to play Thalnos last turn, but I think he smartly expected that Blitzchung doesn't actually want to build a board that turn. So yeah. if Possessi puts a minion on the board, then it gives Blitzchung something to do with his mana, even if it's just a Lunar Eclipse. And this really is the ultimate punish to what Blitzchung does here by plus passing the turn. Not to say that it's necessarily wrong, of course, and it's a punish in that sense, but this is as bad as it could have gone. Uh, obviously, if better five drops had come down, it would be even worse. But still, he's massively behind on board. And uh, even ignoring the possibility of a Flame Strike, a Mask of Cthulhu, his board's just going to get wiped up already. However, Blitzchung does have a very strong push with um, Lunar Eclipse, plus all of this stuff. I don't feel like this is the fungal turn. He definitely wants to go solar with prides, right? Yep, 100%. All right, this here it is. It out of range of Flame Strike, although we do see the double devolving from Possessi. And Yesterday, I actually said something like when there were five minions on the board devolving, hitting two of the same is super unlucky. And then my brother, who um, studied statistics, told me, <laughs> he called me out for that. It's not actually that unlikely. Like the number of minion breakpoint where you can call it unlucky that it hits two of the same is at least six on board. So okay. this is about the average outcome for Possessi. <laughs> Interesting. Lucky, unlucky, meaning sub and above 50%. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm just uh, enjoying learning more about the extended uh, Gia lore uh, <laughs> as, as I just become more and more terrified about uh, about how clever your family must be with a combined <laughs> intellect of like 10,000. Uh, but yeah, the important thing is, of course, as you said, the expected outcome just about, thanks uh, Gia's brother, um, comes down, which means that he can clear off the rest, go for another devolving missiles, the absolute back-breaking outcome for Blitzchung because he needed these to stick. Uh, Possessi gets uh, uh, about the 63.4% uh, outcome there of uh, hitting exactly two minions when there are four left, and he can clear up basically everything that matters, especially with the Anchorman, leaving only one card in play for Blitzchung. This was a disaster. Yeah, that was very, very powerful. Honestly, I think the random number you threw out might not be too far from the actual value. So congrats yeah, on gaining another 10,000 <laughs> IQ by talking. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't change the fact that Possessi is miles in the lead. He's also drawn into his flame strike as well as um, there's just more of them in the deck right now. And he has second encounters flow. The only way I see him losing, honestly, is if he bricks on card draw from this point and Blitzchung just takes a couple of turns to do nothing. Yeah. And then build consecutive boards. But I don't know if Blitzchung can afford to do that. I mean, Blitzchung's just dead if he does that. Double fireball with spell damage plus Mask of Cthune. Like, uh, Possessi's got it all. He just kills him. Maybe not immediately, but it certainly feels like Blitzchung is just going to go for the one gibberling to end them all. 5-10. <laughs>
And next turn, probably Jibberling Innervate. Oh. Uh, Jibberling, Jibberling Glowfly Innervate Soul? Something like that? Yeah. No matter how you slice it, it doesn't feel like it's a winning play. Indeed. Zessie with the second flow, going to go ahead and draw his deck. Any brain freeze is huge here. Even shooting star in a single minion, you would take it at this point because yeah. just fireball and ping can deal with it now. Uh, Doesn't need another shooting star, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm looking at font or potion just to give yourself uh, more ability to keep uh, dominating the board. Like another right. uh, imprisoned observer was not bad. <laughs> The Vardens, they never stop. Yeah, they need to chill out. Because Essie just has like four game winning cards in hand. Like as in individually, they already win the game, but he has all of them. <laughs> oh, the final enjoy. push for Blitzchung. This truly is it. If this doesn't get there, the game is just over. And he does manage to get Soul of the Forest. So it's difficult to deal with, to be fair. Um, but even having said that, does Possess he just have lethal? No, not quite, because he used the fireball previously. At the very least, he can clean this up, no problem. I feel like he's not even playing Varden here because it might make Blitzchung super salty. <laughs> but the Varden <laughs> is just the easiest way to go about this. Like yeah. Varden fireball mm -hmm. phase, you definitely win the next turn because you've already seen a lunar eclipse, and Blitzchung is not playing guidance in any list. There's literally no outs. But if he wants to go about this in a different way without presenting the high rolliest of the cards that he's generated, then sure. <laughs> yeah, I think there's uh, many routes here that you can take to a 100% victory. The so Varden is the least thinking, though. Oh, now, now I'm interested. Okay, <laughs> it's after all of that is the Varden. <laughs> yeah, really nothing that can be done. It's going to be... A, uh, a game three here, I believe now, Gia, as that is just fireball, lethal represented next turn. Uh, and it's, you know, what we were kind of expecting from Possessi, at the very least to have a much better chance in game two when he switches over to his alternate list. Uh, but will that continue in game three? Was did Blitzchung, like, he didn't have a great hand in all honesty. He was on the play instead of the coin. Uh, it took a, he wasn't going innovate into Glowfly or anything like that. It only came down on turn five, which is fairly slow in the matchup. You do ideally want to be popping off on turn three or four. And it's because of that Imprisoned Observer that Possessi generated, which is so sick in the matchup if you're able to set it up in such a way that you got the board clear the turn before that and you can use it as a pseudo Doomsayer, um, or what do you call that, the one mana zero five or Sigil of Flame, all of these kind of similar <laughs> effects that yeah. uh, deter your opponent from building onto the board. And it so happens that Observer is the perfect shape to deny the best development for Token Druid on top of giving Possessi a minion presence. It just gave him too much tempo for Blitzchung to come back from. And we'll see if Possessi can replicate that because it was not just a perfect font, it was a perfect early encounters flow as well. It's one of the things we're just realizing, or I suppose kind of forgetting that now that Spell Mage is the most popular version, is that Mage just has some really good minions. Like when Imprison Observer was in Reno Mage, it was consistently like the top one or two highest mulligan win rate card. And it's uh, showing why once again here, as it's all the way to game three G. This would be the first series that Blitzchung has lost in like eight series time now. Uh, he has just been dominating <laughs> game after game, series after series. But Possessi may have found his road to redemption here because as we've been saying bad couple of seasons for him in gm after a uh, strong start in his first season in grandmasters and it's time to turn that around now but this is not the greatest hand to do it with he at least has oh i was gonna say font of power but he threw it away alongside the deck of lunacy mm. which i can also understand doing especially when you're on the coin where you have a chance to play encounters flow if you get it immediately on turn one um for Blitzchung, though, the hand is great. Fungal Fortunes, Glowfly Swarm, and the immediate Lightning Bloom, Solar Eclipse, Arbor Up. That's just the Giga Nuts. This is the Terra Nuts. He is uh, nodding his head correctly. So I think that's a gibbling overdrawn based on how okay. the uh, drawing animation goes. But uh, pff, whatever. 
it goes down back to Giga Nuts. I mean, if he had an <laughs> innervate there, we could already call this game over instead yeah. of the gibberling. But, oh, oh, okay. This is still six glow flies. Six glow flies into solar plus arbor up. This uh, seems okay. like the Giga Nuts to me. Not the Terra because it's only six glow flies, but you're right. It's still <laughs> the Giga Nuts. Uh, Possessi has combustion and. Brain Freeze to deal yeah. with four of them. Can also start with the Spring Water. He's, uh, he won't overdraw just yet. And if you hit something like Primordial Studies and um, Shooting Star exactly, I think you might go for that instead of this. But it's niche enough that Possessy says he is going to hold off. But Blitzchung still does the thing. You definitely do do the thing here. It's like the most broken combo of two cards that you can do in Hearthstone right now. Three cards, Derek. Uh, sure, okay, because you want to do it two turns earlier. And there is little that can be done here for Possessi. We're looking for Miracle outs off of a Pexis Blast. Uh, what, Earth Elemental doesn't even really come close to pulling this one Derek, back? Derek, don't forget about Varden. Ah. It's all about the Varden. Pond of power into Varden into Coin Flame Strike, but no dice. No <laughs> okay, dice. It has to be great missiles. Okay, that's about uh, the average sure. outcome on six minions. So combustion on this board. If he fits in a ping, can deal with the other, but he really doesn't want to use the coin here, so it might be combustion and a brain freeze instead. What to do? What to do? Is it definitely a combustion turn? Yeah, you could just leave the combustion, go for another missiles, pray that you get lucky. I think Zessi's play on average, again, I don't have the exact numbers, would remove more immediate damage from the board, but leaves more minion uh, quantity on board, which is fine if you're out is flame strike anyway, but Blitzchung has the answer to that, which is Soul of the Forest, and now we are once again on a Varden out, I think. Yeah, I'm sure that if you had 10-15 uh, minutes, you could figure out the exact odds, Gia, but you don't even have 10-15 seconds in this game, because <laughs> this is over already. Doesn't even have the out to draw for Varden, as you've been saying. We're looking for the biggest, beefiest 5-drop you've ever seen. Oh, uh, That's pretty big and beefy, to be fair. Yeah. Scrap Golem. That's also going to give Possessi four more armor as it dies. And currently, Blitzchung doesn't have... Oh, pff, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind, Derek. I, I don't know why I ever say anything. Uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't even thought about counting. That is just lethal. That is a billion extra damage. And Blitzchung is going to be able to win the series. For Possessi, it's so heartbreaking to go out like this. You strive, you strive so hard, 2-0 through the off-stream matches, beating a token druid already, starting to think you'd be able to do it again. But Blitzchung on this druid, he's just unstoppable. He, he truly is. Okay, Blitzchung has been playing the deck, I think, to the maximum optimum. What's the word? Just the most optimal he can. Right. I don't think I've seen any mistakes or even questionable plays from Blitzchung. And he did, at the spots where his deck was not being 100% cooperative, do things like um, deliberately guess wrong on Guess the Weight to yeah, make yeah, sure yeah. that he would not overdraw more than one card off of the next Fungal Fortunes. Stuff like that is what's giving him the extra percentage. But we cannot deny that he's also been getting the absolute best possible token true enhance game after game. It's how you do it, right? We've seen other players fall by the wayside, and uh, Blitzchung just is one with the treants. He's the Lorax uh, of APAC GM. He uh, speaks for the trees because the trees have no tongues. Um, I love that book. Uh, but it does mean that he is going through to the finals. Two weeks in a Rogia, and we could finally here be seeing our first repeat champion in APAC GM. But what do